so, yeah, kar- kar- karibu sana karibu sana tunakusikia karibu sana awesome so awesome. thank you so much rodrigo good evening everyone i'm your host michelle midigo and welcome to youthful expressions <laughs> So like Rodrigo said we have we have a very crucial topic uh gender based violence i think most of you have seen the poster yeah so today we we'll, we have a very special guest let me call her guest you know her i think you know her she's she's called Zipora Nyangara but she likes to be referred to as ZP if she's in the room say hi ZP hello Zipi alingia hapa kitambo. Hi Zipi. I think she has an issue with her mic. Zipi unaniangusha. Maana venye nimekuteja nani. Mtu cha chini. Hakuna watu tumbrom. Zipi. Hi Zipi how are you? Ndio hiyo mic imewaka. Hey, hello Zipi. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yoni, we can't hear you. I think ni internet ya. Yo internet ya Airtel tunakataa. Wewe una shout. Alafu anisikie. Zipi, we are ready for you. Zipi, we can't hear you. I don't know if it's your mic. All right. So Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Uh keep, keep going. Let me see if I can be able to fix Zippy's mic because I know there's, there's usually an issue. Let me try to fix it for her now. Okay. Okay. So Zippy Zippy is a counseling therapist. And she's the best person to handle this. I try to fix your mic. Anyway, so I hope you're all excited for the topic. I need to hear people's views about the topic. Let me ask. Re, Re Kimemia, hello. Re. Re Kimemia. Yeah. Michelle, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. So before you start, I wanted to hear Reki Memia's view about the topic gender-based violence. Then we can start. Please. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, hi Michelle. Hi. Sorry, I don't have lights and I'm not feeling well at all. Oh, it's But, okay. Um, the topic today is something I am really concerned about because I recently lost a neighbor to to violence. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a very emotional topic for me. I'm yeah. glad we are discussing it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fred. Get well soon. Thank you. Zipi, so Zipi back to you. It, yes. <laughs> Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Introduce yourself then okay, you can say. Yeah. You were saying something. Yeah. I wanted you to introduce I, Okay, Sawasa. So my name is Zipora. Okay. Okay. My name is Zipora Nyangara Mombi. My preferred yeah. name is Zipi. I am a professional psychological counselor and also a clarity coach. and at the moment i lead an organization called haven of dreams it's a women led and a youth led organization based mm-hmm. in akuru county and basically our area of focus is gender equality reproductive health mental health and psychosocial support and youth empowerment we are working with the youth in uh, slum areas and low income areas and also we work with women and men as part of male champions for mm-hmm. women rights so he for she 
So in a nutshell, that is what we do in our organization. That's nice. Thank you so much, Zipi. Um, I think we can start okay. the topic because time is not on our okay. side. Yeah. yeah. So give us your, your, your definition of what gender-based violence is. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, gender-based violence is just violence that is directed against a person because of that person's gender. For example, you be, you're hit because you're a woman. You're abused because you are a man. So basically, it's the violence that is directed to you because of your gender, either being male or female. Yeah, that's nice. And can you give us some of the examples of gender-based violence? Zippy, can you hear me? Yeah, we we have several. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. We uh -huh. have several forms of of based violence. Mm -hmm. One, we have the physical violence. Ile nye unachapangwa mangumi. Some utapata wanachapo angumi kadozia three times a day in the morning when the husband wakes up or even the wife wakes up. Because you see, gender-based violence is not just about the woman, it's also about the man. So physical violence can be through beating, hitting, and kicking. We also have emotional violence. Emotional violence, basically, it's more of verbative, like so basically, it's, it, uh, it affects you emotionally. And then also we have economical violence. Economical violence, uh, it affects you, uh, especially for a woman, economically, where you are. It's not working, but utampata kopale, gazeti, getting to read the newspaper. In the evening when you go home, you are give all the money that you've worked for the whole day or you have earned the whole day. That is economical violence. Or where you buy your way in or have a sexual intercourse. So Zippy, we lost you. Zippy. I can't hear you. I'm really sorry guys for that. <laughs> Zippy, can you hear me now? Um, sorry guys, Zippy says that her internet is kind of unstable for the moment. Rodrigo? Rodrigo left us. Michelle, can you hear Michelle, me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. My, my apologies. My apologies. My apologies for that. My apologies for that. So basically, as, as I was saying, uh, when you're talking about the different forms of violence, we have different forms. We had talked about physical violence, emotional violence, economical violence, and we also have retrogressive culture. When you're talking about retrogressive culture, it in, includes 
female genital mutilation that still is happening in our community. We also talk about wife inheritance, especially in the Western side where if my husband dies, then I need to be inherited by the brother so that we can continue with that generation. And then we also have sexual violence. Sexual violence has some different uh, subcategories. One, we have violence, we have rape, we have incest, we have sexual harassment. So when talking about rape, rape is just uh, having sexual intercourse with someone without their consent. It doesn't matter whether she was acting or he was acting in a manner likely to suggest that they want you. As long as they did not give consent, that is rape. Then we have defilement. Defilement, having sexual intercourse with, having sex with an, an, uh, an individual or a minor who is below 18 years. And I know some people will justify and they will say, she looked older than 18 years. How would I have known? My friend asked for the ID. Because also, when once we get that, we, uh, we get defilement cases, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a life sentence. And also, we have incest. Incest is when we are having sexual relationships in families. An uncle with a cousin, an, uh, an uncle with a niece, a mother and a son, and we've had these scenarios happening in our, in our community. From where I come from, I think you will hear once in a while, mm -hmm. a case of incest. And then we have into a sexual harassment. Before I go to intimate partner violence, we have sexual harassment. Sexual harassment, is you just harass sexually as a woman by how you wear, how they view you, you are objectified, you are, People see you as a sex object. And this one also happens both with the male and with the female. Like we said, gender-based violence is just the violence that is directed to you or against you because of your gender. So, and then we now have intimate partner violence that is really happening right now in our country, not just in our country, where you find couples fighting every other time, you find, uh, a husband beating the wife, a wife beating the husband. We have so many cases of intimate partner violence. You will find like Ray mentioned, uh, there are different causes for violence and even for the intimate partner violence, but you will find that sometimes it may be related because or maybe due because uh, of as a result of financial issues, poverty. But in reality, we are not supposed to like justify any form of gender-based violence. Because the more we justify, the more we allow people to think that it's okay for you to go and rape a girl. We've seen cases where you I think this week there was a scenario where a father raped a four-year-old daughter, biological daughter, it's not a stepdaughter, and a four and a, and a four-day-old daughter. So and a four-day-old child. So you can imagine that these are cases that are happening in our areas. These are not like at the just out of the blues. It said if you've not been abused, you know somebody who has been abused. It could mm -hmm. be you, you have a story to tell, it could be your friend. It could be your parent, because we are now living in a generation where even parents are just having the intimate partner violence, they are physical towards each other, and our children are watching the same. Yes. Yeah. So, Zippy, uh, yeah. like there's a, there was a video that was going viral. Um, mm -hmm. Like, a lady was, was killed by the father to the boyfriend. Yes. Where do we categorize that? That one would fall. Yeah, that one would fall under physical uh, mm -hmm. violence and also intimate partner violence because intimate partner violence is violence that happens between couples, people who are in relationship, whether married or just dating or courtship. So that one would fall in the, those either it's.
yes. Okay, okay. So uh, what, what are some of the major causes of gender-based violence? One, uh, it's the issue of deep rooted culture. We, we, in as much to go in the 21st century, we cannot shy away from the fact that we have deep rooted culture. I was once working in uh, Baringo in East Pokot, and there were very many cases of gender-based violence, especially physical violence. So when we, we just started interrogating as to why women knew their rights, but then still the physical violence would still be meted on them, and it, it was still on the increase, we realized that they, they had this retrogressive culture or stereotypes. So we asked the ladies and they were like, eh, buona si potuchana, then in a manisha, hatupendi. So for them, be beaten every day, asubui na jioni, and they're old mamas, and they, that's how they've grown. Like, if a man does not beat me, they actually go to them and cry. Mbebe squeezy uliacha kunipenda, unichapi kwa nini, because that is how they have grown. We've also, we also have other retrogressive cultures like an uh, FGM. FGM is what uh, identifies you as a woman. If you've gone through a cut, then it also means that the dowry will also be high. You, your family will receive more cows. So those are the kind of depleted cultures that we are in. We believe that wife inheritance is okay. So you, you are forced to be inherited by your, your brother, your husband's brother. So those are the kind of things that also happen. We also have poverty. People yeah. will uh, be, will go through gender-based violence and we have normalized that because you will beat me and you will hit me as my husband and you will ask me, where are you headed? As in, what do you have to show? So we have normalized that because we feel like, ah, it's, it's just okay. And once we... You will realize that sometimes they go through gender-based violence a lot because they even do not have a voice to speak. Then also we have issues of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about self-esteem issues, you'll realize that self-esteem is basically the worth you put on yourself. And for those that do not have a high self-esteem, mm -hmm. what they do, they have defense mechanism. So they will beat a woman or they will beat a man so that they can prove that they have the strength. Probably you grew up knowing that if a woman is not beaten, that you, then you're not a man enough. So you will go into your relationship, whether it's dating or marriage, and then go beating your wife because maybe you are covering up for the issues that led to your self-esteem issues. So self-esteem and also the fact that we have gender inequality. A woman is not respected for being a woman. A woman is told that for you to get a job, Lazima, I sleep with you. You have to sleep your way through jobs. Yet a man will come and say, I have these papers or even do not have papers, but then you're given a job opportunity because you are a man. But then because we have issues of gender inequality, a woman must struggle, they must suffer because of the issues of gender inequality. And we cannot run away from the fact that as a country, we have really, we, we are gender inequal. We have gender issues of gender inequality. So it really propels the issues of uh, gender-based violence. And the fact that also we have delayed justice in our court system, in our judicial system, makes people realize or just think that if so-and-so raped a girl and has never been prosecuted and actually is out in the community then, Akuna stress, I can just uh, also do the same thing. If so and so was able to beat, uh, beat up a woman and nothing happened, then there's no issue. If I can beat up my man, then, and nothing happens to me as a woman, then let me just continue because we have, and, and we have cases where men are beaten thoroughly. 
completely, but because also of ego issues that kazi ya mwanaume ni gani wewe unataka kuchapwa you're not a man enough then it's not possible i will give a scenario in one of the areas that i worked in a woman would beat the husband like thoroughly but so what would happen she would sit on his face and then start screaming so when the neighbors come they think that it's the man that is beating the wife but it's the vice versa so then now the community now starts beating the husband whereas he had already suffered so you can imagine but then because of his ego how do you go report as a man that nimechapwa na bibi what will the society say what will what would really happen so all those issues also result to gender based violence and actually a pattern that we have grown if chances are high that if you grew up in an abusive pare, uh, an abusive home Mm-hmm. Chances are high that you end up also being abusive because that is the way that you know that is your way of culture that is how you know how to do things so there is no way that you will say i would do things different because you do not have a place of difference yeah 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 thank you so much zp and if you guys have questions feel free to ask zp is here for us <laughs> so yeah. zp let's move on uh like how do we prevent gender based violence if you get to be in such a situation like how can you prevent mm-hmm. such violence mm-hmm. so well uh i i i know of two ways that we can prevent or avoid gender based violence yeah. one is education Yeah. Some people especially because we are talking about gender based violence and the fact that love does not hurt some people are not even aware that of that they are being violated true true because that is how it grown so we need to educate our community we need to tell our women and even our men our boys and girls our younger brothers and sisters that there is gender based violence So we and we really need to be open about it. Akuna stories are pushed to go forward and saying that ah don't worry it it was your husband who was teaching you and and wanting you to be to behave nicely because I know sometimes we justify that ah alinipiga kofi lakini ni kwa sababu nilikuwa nimemisbehave nilikuwa nimweke chai kombe mbili za vijiko mbili za askari but nika make mistake nikamwekea tatu so hii kofi imenikumbusha next time sita sitafanya hivyo but then that is still gender based violence can we educate our community and tell them that we need to stop normalizing some things we need to stop having some ideation that this is okay this is not okay we need to tell our community that gender based violence is wrong we need to educate them to tell mm. them in the event rape has happened mm. how do i go about it do i go and sit with the village elders uh, in a kipka like for example in a kalinj in setup and say this is a kipka wazee wameongea wamesema ya kwamba uh, this one we we cannot uh, continue with it or your clan will bring uh, there's a sita sita kind of setup that your clan will bring six movies six goats and then we finish this can we educate our people that yes as much as gender based violence will happen and and in the reality it keeps on happening every day in our home this a gender based violence case but then we need to report those cases if it happens kindly go to the police station and report the cases kindly know kuna zile the negotiable like we can negotiate on some things but then there are things that we cannot negotiate on them if it is rape case don't take a shower just pack your clothes go to the hospital go to the police station report the case so that you are able to get assistance but then if our community does not even know even about constitution does not know about our legal rights then how do we 
help the community. You cannot fight for something that you do not know. So it is important that you fight for something that you know, that you fight for something that is worth. And that is the first thing is by knowing our rights. We have a very good constitution, but even if I ask here, how many of us have read the constitution, I'll either get a one or one person or just two people. And as youth, we don't want to read. But then how do you fight for something that you do not know? We need to educate ourselves that this is what happens. This is where you go get help because it will really assist. And then helping women and even the men to know their worth. That just because me and you are in a relationship doesn't mean I'm a punching bag, by the way. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. It's either you shape up or you shape out. And I do not need to stick in an abusive relationship. We need to empower people to make informed decisions in the essence that they know for sure, for sure, for sure that I have my rights, I know my worth. And I, just because you may be, you've, we, we get these scenarios that I am mm -hmm. an orphan, I do, or I do not have a job, but then you just take advantage of me and just abuse me. So we really need to, to start fighting from a point of no. Then we need to, secondly, advocate for change. Yeah. There are things that have not been going on well when it comes even to gender-based violence. We have normalized what to put Japana and what will we say that, ah, and then in Yumbani, you sort that thing. We have normalized retrogressive cultures like wife inheritance, like FGM. Can we come together as youth, as even as an individual, and just say that you want to advocate for change? You do not want mm -hmm. a young girl to go through the cut because it mm -hmm. is not right go up to the streets and just say that there are some, some of the things that either the, the people want passed will not be passed because it is not right. Because once you advocate for change and you just believe in something that is worth, it's possible for you and you be consistent, it's possible for you to bring that change. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zip. I liked what you said about it's either you shape up or shape out, yeah? Uh, I have a question yeah. for Judge Fazla <laughs> before we can yeah. answer Grace Archie's question. Judge Fazla, can you hear me? Hi, Judge Fazla. She can't hear me. Okay, can let me. Hear. Okay, you can yes, hear me. Michelle, I can hear you. I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Can you allow your husband or your boyfriend to beat you up in the name of Christian? No, that, that is not allowed, not even in the Bible, not any religion does allow that. That is unacceptable at any point and at any way in life. But you know, you know the Bible says we are subject to the men. No, uh, you see, that is how we try to interpret the Bible the wrong way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I don't so, think it's justified. So, <laughs> yes. In fact, I, I, um, before before we, we, we go on, Sana, I you know, Zippy, tell us. Um, and I know, I know, of course, we have Reverend John Mark who's here today with us. I know we have uh, uh, Tabitha Ogango who's also here with us, and they'll be able to give their insight as well. But let me ask you something, Zippy. Let me, in fact, let me turn on yes. my camera so that all of this can see me. So let me ask you a question, Zippy. Mm -hmm. What do you think makes the retrogressive uh, behaviors continue and that culture continue? For me, what I'm thinking, the reason why people show that it can defend those people, right? And when you're talking about the retrogressive culture, like you said, the very people who are the people that are supposed to be the lawmakers, you know, to make sure that these laws are being followed are the ones that are retrogressive in themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see, when you talk about, yes, we are a retrogressive culture, but then the question then remains, uh, how then do we change it? Because at the end of the day, the one thing that I know 
Today, if I ever go and accuse, uh, not accuse, if I go to the police station and I say, my wife slapped me, the first thing people will do is start laughing at me. Imagine. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I can imagine. You know, so what happens then? What happens then? Because that makes it, and I know, of course, this is this is part of your job because you're you're a counseling psychologist, which is something I'm thankful for. What then do we do as men, for example? Mm-hmm. Okay. Th- thank you, thank you, Rod, for the questions. When you're talking about retrogressive cultures, yes. It is true that it's still happening. And sadly, some of the lawmakers are part, uh, some of the part of the reason as to why we still have the retrogressive culture. But then I think we need to change our mindset to the point that we believe that we need to know that the reason as to why those people are in power is because we have made them to be in power. We went, we woke up. The, the, the last time we woke up twice to go vote for the lawmakers who we expect that they will make a change. If that does not happen, that is why we have advocacy and lobbying to ensure that some things are not passed. You remember there was a time where someone wanted the legalization of FGM because, and it's a doctor because they believe that FGM is okay, according to them, and according to them, quote unquote, it has helped them. So, but ideally is if we cannot, if we do not see our lawmakers do anything, then it means that we need to put them to task through advocacy and lobbying. And it's not a one-time process. It's, it, it may take time. Sometimes it takes ages for you just to actualize on what you want. But then I would say, do not give up. When it comes to the issues of men being abused, yes, it is happening. And sadly, because we are used to women being abused and because of also the egoistic nature and our African culture, basically, that what is wrong with you? And we, what do we tell the men that are abused? Ata, uh-huh. ata, he, he, as a man, even, let me, in fact, let me tell you, even as a man, ata si ati kiburi tanifanya ni, ni siende kwa polisi. Mm-hmm. Nyaibu. Because I know exactly. they'll start laughing at me and I'll, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, yeah. And, and, and by the way, Rod, let me tell you one thing, because I, I handle so many issues in the community, not just even in counseling, but also in GBV. But then also, we really need to speak it out. You see the way women have, spoken about being abused and now it's becoming an issue that we now want the women to be heard. It's the same way that the men need. We need to normalize the fact that abuse is happening because what happens is with men, when they go through abuse and they do not talk about it, they tend to go through depression because you're suffering in silence. It affects them in one way or another. But then also we have free spaces we have, and we have safe spaces for men now to talk about their issues. We have different men who have spoken out about the abuse that they have gone through. And it's, it is a journey, but I can say Rod, at the moment we've already started that journey where men can have their free space, when they can have their safe space, even when it's just a, a, a forum for men by men, where they can talk issues. We have organizations at the moment that are dealing with men empowerment, not like the one at Men Against Women Empowerment, but we have Mm. organizations that Mm. are dealing with men empowerment and actually Mm. providing a safe space for Mm. men so that they can talk about it. Because Mm. what happens is if men also do not talk about it, that's why you will get, we have men who are going through depression. We have men who are full of resentment because they feel like, why do I need a woman? And you find that sometimes a person, an abused person that never dealt with the abuse ends up being abusive. Even if you check some of yeah, some of the people that are abusive, whether physical or even sexually, if you dig deeper 
they mm. also have a, a history. There's a history. The yeah, there's a history behind it. Just to a point, yeah, that we need, yeah, yeah, we need to break that cycle. Am I saying it's mm. going to be easy? Z, no way. It's not going to be easy because then it mm. means that you need to mm. put your ego down as a man and say, hey, you know what? I am suffering. Mm. I am going to do so much and I need to report. And I also know that we also need to empower the duty bearers like the police officers, the judiciary, the court users committee, the chiefs, everyone that is a duty bearer and accountable to us because the constitution says so. We need to empower them even on how they handle issues of gender-based violence. Because if I go to the police station, it means that I feel safe that you can handle my case. But then if you start treating me in a manner likely to suggest that I am the problem, then it's mm -hmm. the issue. But then it also becomes, it goes back it becomes to hard for me to even go change. to them. Yeah, mm. exactly. That is why we also need all of us to have an attitudinal change, like have a change in attitude. Realize that men are also going through abuse. And if you as a woman want support when you're going through abuse, then you also need to support a man when they are going through abuse so that they also seek justice and also get the all right. I, I like what you said. And uh, I love that John Mark is here. John Mark, Reverend John Mark is the, is the, I want to say this right. And if I don't say it right, he, he, he'll correct me. He's, the, he's in charge of the missions in the Anglican church. And I, what, I, what I wanted to say is the Anglican church, I know this might not necessarily be the, the goal, but there's a, there's a men's uh, association or group that's called Kama. And yes. Kama is something that is supposed to help men to become, you know, at the, at the core, it's basically just uh, experienced men and wise men coming to sit down and knowledgeable men coming to sit down and sit with mm -hmm. youngsters and simply inculcate them into what it is to be a man and... Uh, they mystify the myths that are attached to it. Reverend, am I correct, Naja? <laughs> well, you're trying. You're really trying. You're doing. You're doing yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Reverend, tell us something about you know karma and what they do, and what you, of course, as a man of God who's also in charge of the administrative side of things, what you think is the solution to this, uh, for lack of a better word, this demon that we're dealing with. Well, the Ministry of Karma is to empower men, and not just to empower men, but to create a, a sense of discipline in men to be followers of Christ. So their theme is, um, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, their desire is to disciple men, to reach out to men, disciple men, equip them to follow Christ. And in following Christ, they don't, they don't come alone. They actually come with their family. So the desire is that everyone comes along uh, led by men. And, and, and I come from this background that I believe, and I'm, I'm hoping you, you, the book will come out, that if you want the church to grow fast, disciple men. If you disciple men, you will be surprised at how many will follow. Because if the father of the house is discipled and is a believer, the wife will find it very easy to follow. And that will remove what um, Michelle was talking about, that the man beats the wife. Because if you follow Christ Jesus, there's no way you're going to be violent. There's no way you will lead by example. And Christ's example is loving, kind, forgiving, and all that. And then of, if the father and mother are already walking in the right way, they will help the children walk in the same path. It's always very hard that if mom and dad were believers and walked right, the children will go astray. Of course, there's a stage in life, they become curious and want to find out, be adventurous. Sometimes I tell people, if your kids have never been adventurous, there's something wrong. That is part of growth. But like the Bible says, teach the child in the way they should grow. And when they're older, they will follow. Mm -hmm. Now, coming into the gender-based violence we're talking about today, um, yes. I have this interesting um, theory. <laughs> yes. Gender-based violence is perpetuated, one, by those who have been abused before, two, those who have seen their role models treat people like that. And when I say treat people, whether it's male or female, treat people like that. And number three, it's perpetuated by those who have seen it happen and did nothing. <laughs> right. True. Did nothing. 
In other words, you 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 saw like now you are my play fans. Yes, you become part of it. Like now, let me say, Michelle, you've seen your your girlfriend's boyfriend is uh, beats her so often, and all you say, well, yeah, imagine it's okay. I mean, he'll change. The truth is, change to you, <laughs> men don't change. Men don't change because you want us to change. You know, there's a mistake most women think that, you know, he will change once we get married. When I show him I love him, he'll change. No, we will not change. We don't want to change. We can't change because you want us to change. We change when we want to change. True. Men change because they want to change. They choose to change because they see the need to change. So don't ever get into a relationship with some guy. And that's why the Bible says, if he's not a Christian, don't expect him to get saved because of you. If you never saw right. him before you showed up, he won't get saved because you showed up. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, he will not change because of you, but he'll change because he sees the need to change. So when right. someone yeah. is abusive um, and does not stop, then the next step is get him reported. Now, like you yeah. said, the problem we sometimes are is, is that we go to police at the police centers to report. And if he's a man, like just like um Rod is saying, at you pick one and a mama. Are you seeing? <laughs> hey, let's, let, let, let's see that lady. We are looking for a tough lady like that one. She can hey, help us. Or a boxer or something, <laughs> you know. But but then the truth is there are men who are beaten by women. But the other option also is we have women who are beaten by men mm. and think that in being beaten, they are loved. Mm. Yes. True. In fact, when I talk about leading by love, because that's the, that's, 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 that's the principle now I'm teaching, that we lead by love. Mm. Jesus mm. helped explain something many of us don't understand. We know that the, 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 the Ten Commandments summary, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and, da, da, da. and then the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, when that was... Um, paraphrased, Jesus realized there's a problem. The problem is, what if Michelle's understanding of love is warped up? Because your loving is, if you're being beaten, to be shown love. <laughs> so you yeah, go up. That, knowing, that could be a love language, yeah. Yes, you are grow up knowing that unless I, I, I'm in a chapa, he does not love me. So what do you yeah. think will happen when Michelle wants to show her child she loves her? You and beat I'm the chapa. Mm. So Jesus then corrects that by saying, don't just love your neighbors as you love yourself, but mm. love them as I have loved you. <laughs> you get the difference? Because if you look so, at the... So that, right? so that you don't have your own interpretation of the... Of you the don't self. have your own interpretation because your own interpretation could actually be wrong and is based on your personal experience. Okay? Mm. So he says, love them as I have loved you. And how has he loved us? Sacrificially. He's loved us without holding unconditionally. He's given it. He's given himself. That's sacrificial. He's given himself. So if you want to tell someone you love them, are you willing to sacrifice yourself? Like I tell, I've been married the last 20 years. And I tell people, if you touch my wife, trust me, I'll kill you. And I feel Woo! nothing, by the way. I kill you and I feel nothing. And if you ask me, I'll say, Jesus taught me that you touch my wife over my dead body. Because you don't touch his wife, his bride, while he's watching. He'll do anything to stop. Yes, si potese Yesu kwa sababu ya kuchapa mtu sai. Ati what? Si potese Yesu. Utakuwa umeokoka ama umeanguka? Because that's that's the only language I know that he taught me. That I love him. Salaba ya kapenda. Madam President, gotcha. Atafute msalaba ya katikati. <laughs> no, I saw the middle one. No, we say, Nani to back you. I mean, just a bit, a little back up, Nani, Pastor. Lewis, Lewis says, Eh, where I go to a Pocachuada, 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 Nina Pendo Quill, said a chap water, he do one, and Napendo Quill. When I go, he could chap on a seven, mini li chap, one li charaswa. Una do you ni mapenzi. And you see, that's what we are saying. That's what we are saying. That if your understanding of love is, is, is wrong, then you will perpetuate that. Yes. And that's why Jesus says, then love as I and have loved. Perpetuate, perpetuate is a new word. Okay. You will encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the language you will be able to promote, to encourage, to, to keep extending to the next person. Do you want me to go further? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, they get so, the so, point so, now. yes. Yeah, you get the point, yes. 
So that's what we are saying, that in every relationship, whether it is at marriage level or it is at friendship level, boy-girl relationship level, mm -hmm. when you are beginning, you need to ask yourself, what are the principles? What, where exactly are you basing it? If you're basing it in your own personal experience, which you might, might be the only one you have, it could fall short. Mm -hmm. If you're basing it on what Jesus is saying, then the standard, the bar has been raised. High, and it is so high enough, the good thing is it can't come low to meet you. You've got to go up to meet it. And in going up, you will also be raising standards. And that's why Paul writes and says, don't be equally unyoked, guys, because they will not reach their standard. Now, then you might ask the last question, so I don't do all the talking. I wasn't the only one to talk. You might last, ask the last, <laughs> the last question. What if that's the only way I know how? Because, yeah. What yeah. if that's, that's the, the only way I've seen... I've seen my mom, uh, I've seen my dad and my mom, that's the love language they use. I've seen my uncles, I've seen my relatives, like Rodrigo's before I said, it's a culture, so what is... Yeah. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, let me tell you something, uh, Zipora. you can't say it's not a love language, and it works for some people. Yeah, it's not a love language. You see, there are some people I know who have been beaten, they've been beaten so much, Back and see for chapo in a quani issue. So yeah, that's what it comes to that point. That, that condition that is what makes it. A, 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 a in a a yes. Hey. Let me tell you, I have I, I deal like just like you, I deal with a lot of people. And I was talking to this girl who just says, Me, I like I, I like causing things so that at least we quarrel, you know. We quarrel. <laughs> exactly. So I, hey. I just keep annoying Kidogo, we quarrel Kidogo, then we make up. And you're wondering, mm -hmm. I mean. It, that's the language of your language of love. He said, yeah, that's how I, you know, now that is not in the five languages of love. So the guy who wrote the five languages of love wrote it from his own experience, which is good and we accept all of them. But then uh, come to Africa and you discover a new language that he just, just strike <laughs> the dog or step on his dog, stand up, uh, hide the remote. And then uh, once he's beaten you, then he's like, ah, so I'm um, saying normal, he's normal. The truth is, like I was saying, if the language, if your own personal experience is not right, then that's where we need the redirection. And the redirection begins with your focal point. And that is where your values are. Which values are we upholding? Am I upholding the lower values like Madam President would say? Or is Tabi upholding the lower values? Is Rod holding? You know, if, if, if we start doing that, like I am cross-culturally married and I remember before I got married, I went to my father-in-law and I told him, I want us to agree on what we are going to do when I'm coming to pay diary because the Kikuyu culture of doing it and the Luo culture of doing it are totally different. Kikuyu culture, the, 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 the women must come and you know, you bring in and you're told the number of envelopes, blah, blah, blah. The Luo culture, no, if you can bring a million, but if you've not brought an animal, you've done zero, okay? So we had to agree on which one. So we set our own standard together at two different communities. Then I told my wife, Luos do it this way, Kikuyus do it this way, we are going to do it this way. Now, everybody then walks with us mm -hmm. in our path. Because if I start walking with Rod in his path and I'm trying to catch up, the conditions are not good enough because they don't set the standard. Rod won't be the one setting the standard. Madam Principal will not be the one setting the standard for my life and my, and my future. So then we need to set the standards and the standards we've been given is this good book. It is high but it's worth achieving. And the joy of achieving it is, 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 is it, 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 can't, it can't get any better than that. It can't get any better than that. Yeah, let me stop there. Right. Yeah, so, uh, right, right before I'll Yes, yes, yes. I'll still come back to... All this time, and I'll get me now office. I'll still come back to... <laughs> I'll still come back to Reverend John Mark, but uh, Zippy say something. I want to go to yeah. Tabby, but before I go to Tabby, uh, Zippy say something. Okay, I wanted to say that behaviors can be learned, yeah. they can be unlearned, and they can be relearned. And that's yeah. something that we really need to sura, weka sura tukuane bwana, weka sura, ibu weka sura, ya kutuku, wezi kuwa so when the men speak and at one is 
Oh. <laughs> we need to unlearn some behaviors. We need to right. relearn some behaviors and we need to learn some behaviors. I love the fact that uh, the way Rev was speaking, that even in our culture, some of the things that uh, are not happening in the Western cultures are happening in our culture. And it's because of how we were brought up. But then also we really need to ensure that we do not tolerate abuse and say that it's our culture. Like I said, I went to East Pokot and women were crying. But it's because they have not been exposed even to our constitution, even to knowing the laws to understand that they are going through abuse. That is why it's important. And I will still repeat to say that not unless you have information, you cannot fight for something that you do Zippy, not know. I, that no, one is Zippy, are you sure? Are you, you know how many women I've met who are who are professors who continue to say, I can't marry a man who doesn't beat me. Because in it's his because arguments and he's beating me, I find love. Uh -huh, yeah, it's uh -huh, because, uh -huh. you see, Rod, we, we, we have been accustomed into but our that, culture. Cindy, you can't say they don't just have... a minute. Just a minute, Rod. Uh -huh, summer, summer. So I, I'm saying we have... Yeah, zip it, no cookie, no cookie. Yeah, we've been accustomed to our culture. Nikama Venyewe will grow up, or maybe in some cultures, you were told that if a woman eats up some part of a chicken, then it means that you're Nikama Nilana or something like that. I'm a and like I said, it Mwanaume. takes I'm a disrespect, Monome. It takes time for us to really just decide that we are unlearning some behaviors. And yes, there are professors that have, or, and even women that I know, that they know their way of loving is what is, be, is through being beaten. But you see, they are also covering up something because they do not have like a point of reference. Because, like Pasi said, that is how they have grown up, knowing that they have grown up knowing that. Being abused, being beaten is a form of love. And like I said, we need to have this conversation, continue advocating for change. It's not a one day thing because even the lady that was advocating for FGM is a doctor. Yet we know that FGM is wrong, but you see that it's a learned person going that, uh, go, uh, just advocating for the same. Is it right. going to happen? Does it mean that? Those that are learned, quote unquote, are the ones that have all the information. Sometimes you are learned, yes, but then you do not have all the information or you still ascribe to the former mm -hmm. cultures. You still ascribe to the retrogressive culture. And then also I would want to appreciate Reverend John Mark. One of the challenges that we get when you're talking about gender-based violence actually uh, is spiritual leaders the way spiritual leaders spiritualize everything. And it is really nice to see pastors coming out and not advocating for gender-based violence. We have mm. seen, I, at, uh, you go through gender-based violence. Pastor those pastors who start saying, you know, these are said forgive, uh, we should have another. Yeah, so go to the mountain pray for seven days, and when you come down, everything will be fine. The Lord hey, will have changed. You know, uh, the Bible says, you Mutilale know. Exactly. Exactly. But, but it's really nice that we are getting pastors supporting this because even pastors are also perpetuators of gender-based violence because I agree. they will, they, we, I know of pastors who are sexually abusive to their, to their congregants because mm. at Asema, Bibliya Lisema, you know the way they manipulate, eh, anakula kondo, na watoto wa kondo, na kuku, na mayai, na kila kitu. And it's really pathetic and being that pastors and religious leaders are gatekeepers, 
yet we are not getting that support, but I would really want to appreciate you, Reverend John Mark, and I'm hoping that you will really encourage other religious people to join this bandwagon to ensure that we can spiritualize some things, but not some other things. Aliomba, Mungu ali alisamehe makosa yote, kwevo yata nikidogo, and then we end up having women who will leave their homes, matrimonial homes, as dead bodies. Because the pastor, mm. alifemba, mm. alifemba, 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 for 40 days, alifemba, desert. Bebe, mm. kidogo yako. Don't you have the Holy Spirit? Can't you fast? Mm. Can't you do this and this and this and this and this? And you know the way women are, we listen to spiritual leaders. Pastor Kisama jump. We never question the jumping. We always ask how high and we jump. Mm. But thank mm. you, Sana Reverend. Okay, so I know I, I, I don't I know I don't uh, to give uh, Reverend uh, Nini because Najua Lazma, you know, I want him to, to, to give his views on that. But before I do, uh, Tabitha Gango, of course, is here. And Tabitha, I know in your very many interactions, both as a wife and as a mother, and as a leader who has an organization that deals with children and the giftings of children, I'm sure you've been or you've heard of cases, so many of them, that include gender based violence. So, Tabitha, um, I don't know, you tell us what you think. Well, thank you for <laughs> giving me that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, let me say, I think I'll speak maybe from from um, a women, a Christian woman uh, position. <laughs> and uh, this right. may sound a little controversial, but I think the church has in many ways uh, not been vocal enough against the gender-based violence. And right. yet the church is a, a very significant uh, uh, organ uh, yes. in the lives of people, whether they are Christians or not. So right. I have found that many times, uh, you know, without going into detail, you're counseling a, a, a girl and they, they come with an issue of either abuse in the home, sometimes with their, you know, either the father uh, or the uncle, um, or an elder in the church or a deacon. And when it comes to the table at the church, then the big agenda then becomes to protect the man, you know, because right. A, he has a family. We have had mothers who yes. also tell their children, A, we have a family name. You know, let's handle this thing another way. So, I mean, one for me, in terms of uh, way forward, uh, this is one of the issues that I, I wish I would hear more about in the church. Uh, the church, especially in Africa, is uh, heavily male at the top, you know, and so that brings a lot of issues in terms of uh, advocating. <laughs> He's my friend. You switch off his mic. I say what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is this, you know, what I'm saying is this, yes, you yeah. will not find in, 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 in Kwanzaa in Pastor John Mark's church, by the no. time you find uh, top clergy that are women, Yani, we will be clapping for them. So the church needs to get to yeah, the we point. Only bishops, we don't where, have one. Yes, we, we are they one. appreciate, <laughs> you see, it's already violent. You see, he's already violent to me here. He's <laughs> already taking my space. You, and you know, imagine the me, I here is Michelle. so I'm nicely. Here. And yeah, uh, you know, we should tell Speaker Michelle, protect Tabitha, protect Tabitha. <laughs> yeah, I listened to him so nicely. Now when I start talking, and this is what they do. In fact, in the church, they won't even give us, you know, positions in those decision-making organs you know, so I'm that we can that. help them you to say, know how to protect women. Protect me and anyway, my what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is this, it, it also happens in my church, that the church must begin to recognize the place of women and, and uh, the voice of women. That is the only way girls and women in the society 
will become affirmed, you know, and also their issues will come to the table. It's sometimes very, very difficult for, for men to empathize. And, um, right. Right, right, right. No, um, education, education. Um, somebody needs to know if something happens to them and they feel pain. I mean, if something happens to you and you feel pain, it cannot be a good thing, you know. So we need to educate people that even if I've been cultured to it's a good thing. The fact that I feel pain, whether it is emotional pain or physical mm. pain, that is mm -hmm. abuse. We define, mm. educate, mm. and then channel where they can be able to come out and begin to reject to be abused. You know, mm. uh, you know, mm. when people refuse to be to be abused, then we will begin to gain traction. But when it is some of us looking and saying, "Bona na, bona na ona they will never be liberated. So for me, I think the church right. can be a major game changer and then education, education, education. Yeah, now Pastor John Mark can That's say, true. I will switch off my mic. <laughs> <laughs> You're protected. He's my friend, I'm safe, I'm safe. He's my friend. Actually, he, he, he is a very good man. There are those ones who, if they were here, I wouldn't speak the way I spoke. You know, the real abusers. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but if I say something before Rev comes in, mm. uh, this is how we, to some point, normalize abuse. I know you are friends, but then there is a way that a man will come and attack you and you will say like, ah, Nisawa, to what do you want me to say? You know, I know we <laughs> there's that friendship bit, but that's how to some point we start normalizing abuse because mm. and it's okay we have had and we can not deny that we live in a patriarchal society so and then when a woman comes and wants to talk the man is already defensive you should have seen the way Percy was like hey no i need to speak i need to speak so you can imagine by the way he'll call me for counseling he'll tell yeah, my he bishop what me. i was saying it's just that Rod, i use that as an example because that is what we normally do unconsciously we nice. support abuse or we support the women's spaces in leadership being suffocated without even realizing that we are doing it, you know, because yeah. uh, it's just a normal thing. Let, let him interject. He's a man. So what do I know? You know? Wanaume, yeah. wanaume kuanga, Ivo. Okay, I can speak now. <laughs> yes, yes. And now, I, I, I know we're about to, to end the show, but before we give, we have to give Pasi, I mean, we have to give Reverend a chance to, a chance to reply no. before we return the program to Michelle. No, Reverend. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The women yeah. with a very deep voice. Now, you there. see, um, like, um, like Zippy said, sometimes the abusers are people in position of influence. And yes. they do a lot of things, like it could be an, an uncle, even a dad, or a big brother, a cousin you really respect. Well, of course, pastors, uh, political leaders, and I mean, it's someone you, you, you look up to, okay? And the problem usually is that when that happens, you don't know how to deal with, one, the relationship you have with the person, and two, the relationship you have with other people who relate to that person. Because that's why most of the times it gets swept under the carpet. Because like if your uncle did that and said, don't tell anyone, if you tell someone, I will, they won't believe you. First, the first thing, they won't believe you. Then the second one is they will not, um, they will, they, they, you, you, you will actually get into trouble because some people will be like, no, you are spoiling the person's name. Now, I know um, that many times, men get blamed for uh, the perpetuation 
which um, happens in gender-based violence. Unfortunately, experience also teaches that sometimes women help perpetuate it. Take, for example, a daughter comes and says, by the way, dad did this. And the mama says, Sh -sh -sh shut up, keep quiet. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. We want to save dad's ego. We want to save the fact you're not saving the guy's ego. You actually are killing someone else. So at the end of the day, you are actually killing your daughter at the expense of saving a marriage. Well, I know we can go into the discussion of uh, what do you want uh, then to do? The truth is, you're like the president telling us there's corruption in my country, so and, and you have the machinery. Yes, you know, you, you actually can say, okay, I can talk to my husband. Yes, he might fight me, but now we know. Because the first thing about sin and about evil is that you must point it and, and call it by name. If you don't call it by name, it remains a, a skeleton uh, in, the, in, in the closet. Yeah. But then, well, I'm not fighting or uh, um, I'm, I'm attacking Tabi. A lot of people sometimes say, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these things happen in Africa or, you know, uh, uh, Africa is dominated by male, whether it's in charge or in politics or trust you me, tell me which country it is not on this planet. Tell me which country. I mean, like England has only one woman at the top, that is the, the queen. After that, most of the guys in parliament are men. <laughs> Any country you go to, including the most democratic country on the planet, Earth is America and guess, well, now they are not. They are one of the least. They, are, they don't even know whether they voted or not. They, we are learning <laughs> from them. It is a man, <laughs> a man world. It's a man world. And the church across the board, Go to countries like America, you will not find a lot of women preachers. The few we know, you can count them on, the, on, on your fingers. But if you come to Africa, we, we have the same problem. That the thing basically is, so when, it, when someone says um, that this and this is happening and it's stronger in Africa, and I smile and I say, well, um, it's good to point it at home so that it looks ugly, but because we Africans sometimes make ours look worse than we really are. The world is rotten across the board. It is bad, ugly. Mm. But let me just wrap mm. up on, on this particular point that we as Christians and particularly um, um, church leaders or spiritual leaders need to rise up above um, the, the, the... Above the rhetoric. Yes, and, uh, and above what we call. Like I like what um, Zippy keeps saying, the constitution, the constitution. Let me tell you, the percentage of Kenyans who know the constitution, is so small, that's number one. But with that constitution, so for me, the constitution is not even my standard. You know why? Because I can get a lawyer who will confuse your, your lawyer and get you locked up even with that constitution. But when I pick this book, this one, you can't defeat me <laughs> simply because the guy who will help me interpret its standards are so high, it won't, it won't fail. So I tell guys, yes, your lawyer, and. I mean, as someone will pay, will, will buy the judge, another one pays the lawyer, I lose the case. If I know what is right, and that's where the church needs to come in. And for me, the church should be the safe haven where if something ha wrong happened, if a lady walks into my office and many do and tell me, this is what is happening in my, in, my, in, my, in my home, I pick it up. And trust you me, if you're married to that guy, I'm coming for you, we will talk. And yes, you can't beat me because I am pastor. And even if you think I will not call you, I may not come to your house because I know that's your safe haven. And, but I will find a way in which I get engaged the conversation. By the end of the day, we will be talking. I have recommended sometimes to some women to get out. Let me be, let me be I'm not confessing, but let me just be honest with you. I have shipped some people out of this country because their lives were threatened helped got them visas to get out of the country and have gone out of the country because their lives were at risk. I mean, that's the extent to which I value the life of that Christian just as much. Now, I'm not saying every time someone walks in and says, oh, my husband, da, 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 da. some will come, I no longer love him. And then after three weeks, it's the, hey, we are back together and like, but I thought you were fighting the other day. He said, yeah, we are through with it. And like, what happened? Did you reconcile? He said, he apologized. He said, okay, um, I'll count up to 10,000. I'm sure you'll call me. <laughs> you know, because someone who's been doing it, most likely today I apologize and then tomorrow. Like there's a young girl I did their wedding and what has been happening mm. is that um, the tension has been bad in their home. So she moved out. I asked what happened. Her life was threatened. 
after that I said, okay, you know what? I'd rather you keep safe. Now don't tell all your friends where you stay. Because it's very easy for the person to ask someone who asks someone who asks someone and then get, they know where you are and you don't know how they'll come. Okay? So what we need to be able to ask ourselves is, is the church a safe haven? It must be. Now, the church is not the pastor. <laughs> That's the mistake most of us make. Pastors are also human beings and we make a lot of mistakes. The church is you, Christian, who has influence. If, someone, if you can listen to someone's story, take them seriously. Like Rod was saying, I can be in fellowship. We are all young girls, single, you know, young couples or young girls or, you know, youth fellowship. And he said, by the way, my guys may have a problem, you know. I said, uh, oh, me, I don't want to go home today. I said, ah, wait, wait, you Rudy Nyumbani. Let's go. Okay, now, guys, by the way, where's the movie? Someone was just, set, you know, setting an alarm saying, things are bad. I don't want to go watch a movie. You see, you are the one who should be able to be sensitive enough to listen. Because you might go to the pastor and the past, that guy could be a member of the council or the member of the board, the board of deacons. Mm -hmm. So you, the pastor looks at you and says, by the way, you know your dad is in the next room and he's listening to this conversation. So the truth is, the pastor may not be as much of a help sometimes. We are saying they should, but if they are not, every Christian should take that responsibility. I tell people this book wasn't written, written for pastors to obey. It was written for every believer to obey. So if the pastor is a believer, he should obey. And if you are a believer, you should be able to obey so that we all walk with one another. It then makes the whole a Christian community a place I can feel at home. Right. Some young people have run away from home. They come to your home, you call their dad and say, by the way, you are not helping. If that if they need <laughs> things happening that are not right at home. Anyway. Right. No, I, I like it. And uh, I know we're about to end the show, but before we do, I want to get final thoughts uh, from ZP and from everyone who, who's here, who's been uh, part of our guests. And of course, ZP today was the main guest. Thank you so much, ZP, for agreeing. ZP is a counseling psychologist, and uh, we are so happy that she lent us her time and she's been working. She's a former Africa. Is it a former or still part of AOV uh, season two? AOV season and she's been two. doing amazing things even in her group. Anyway, so ZP, uh, parting shot even as we conclude. I would want to say that my parting shot is we have to agree that gender-based violence is there, both with women and men, and it's high time we start having a conversation on how we can prevent or mitigate this menace. And I would also like uh, to say the best way to approach this would be multi-sectoral, like the way Rev is saying, we have uh, preachers, we have religious leaders, we have people in the corporate, because every spaces at the moment, right now, we having we are having cases of gender violence. But if you can have a multi-sectoral approach where you bring this, I bring this, I bring education, you bring the people, we train them and just capacity build them, then it's going to be easier. And like I will keep on insisting, it's important also to fight from a point of knowing because without you knowing, then you have nothing to fight for. It's important for you to get to have the information to be capacity built with knowledge and skills. And finally, I would say this because I know there are some of us who are even right now going through gender-based violence. It's just that we do not know where to go or we do not know who to report to because of actually the societal pressure and everything. But I would say, and even challenge those that are listening in right. that be supportive in terms of you are supportive that when I come and tell you, Rod, Rod, I was raped, you're not going to tell me Ulukome Vangwogani as the first thing. Ulukome Mama Aje, Ulukona Smile Jama Aje, you know, but then you would tell me, Zippy, let's go to the police station and report this case and I will work with you. And also the sub theme of this uh, for the topic today is love shouldn't hurt. Right. I know we all want to have titles, misses, girlfriend, but then I would rather be a miss, I'd rather be a single ZP than a dead ZP because I stayed right. in an abusive relationship. Trust right. you, being a missus does not define you, does not add right. any Salary, not unless there is a vacancy that's so easy. If you, if I'm a missus or if I'm a mister, then I will have an, an increase in my salary. But then do not stick in a marriage or in a relationship 
because of the societal pressure. What what can I do, Can I? How will I raise children by myself? But I'd rather you be safe than being sorry. I would rather you live your marriage alive and you can pick yourself. Of course, it's not going to be an easy thing, but then you can pick yourself and just this, yeah, progressively, rather than staying in a place that you are not appreciated, you are not loved, you are being abused. You are not respected in the name of, I want to retain my title as a missus. I want to retain my title as a girlfriend. You can always start life over again. So you can always reach out to us uh, Rod has my contacts and uh, yeah, so that we walk with you the journey. We help you as an organization. We are willing to walk with you the journey. We are willing to ensure that those cases are reported that you have access to justice, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Of course, ZP, you are I, I love that even in AOV2, you are always on the front line trying to, you know, talk to the contestants on our behalf and making sure that uh, you know you're playing your part even as a performer and still a professional of um, well as a counseling psychologist and that's amazing thank you so much for giving us your time uh tabitha uh please give us your final thoughts um you know and what you think so far is the solution as we go forward Well, I, I I think I'm I'm quite happy that a conversation like this is taking place uh, because I think many times what people just need to hear uh, is is a con is conversations like this. So um, you know, like I already said, the the, the people are are uh, it is lack of knowledge that keeps people down. Uh, lack of affirmation that, you know, I mean, even if you've built this thing for how long, you're better off alive than, you know, there are some sacrifices that are not worth it. Uh, of course, the other side of that coin, without wanting to downplay the, the values, and I would say that we need a very clear way of counseling people who who are going to the institution for the, 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 there could be things that I would call abuse and uh, if I come from a conversation like this I can feel uh, empowered or psyched up to just go and walk out because this is abuse <laughs> you know so again, I think as we deal with issues of abuse, we also need to know that, um, I mean, the full picture of, of, of the consequences, you know, so that people need the full support, not support to get you out of an abusive situation, then leave you there to go into depression or whatever right. it is. So I appreciate what Zippy is right. doing. And so contacts like those would be very good so that people know they have a continuous uh, place. Uh, and again, there can never be another place better than the church, a place to keep going, a place to, to find the whole round support. Uh, because let me tell you, we are, we are touching a, a, an issue that is extremely um, delicate right. and whose counsel for people who are working in it needs to be wholesome. Right. It needs to be wholesome. Yeah. Right. True. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Tabitha. Of course, that is the founder and the CEO of uh, Gifted Hands. Always a pleasure having you. Uh, let me hear final thoughts from um, who's this one? I wanted to. John Mark. Uh, John Mark, I may say my final thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> let me hear final thoughts from Madam President. My final then thoughts. we can finally end. <laughs> so final thoughts, Fazi. No, I'm, I, I, first let me just say this was a great um, platform for this conversation. And I believe that a lot more people are hearing and engaging. And the best part is just creating that forum that people can know somebody um, can turn to, talk to someone because that's key. Right. 
if we don't have someone to talk to, that is even more depressing. You know, just like they say, COVID itself doesn't kill you. It is those implications. Like they say, HIV right. don't kill you. It is the implications. So sometimes it may not be the beating that does not kill you. It is the, 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 the fact that you are alone in it and never walk alone, never walk alone, never walk alone. The best story I ever learned as a young boy growing up was the story of the, the Good Samaritan. And this was preached to me in 1991 before uh, Rod was born and uh, some of these other guys by a bishop. <laughs> and, uh, and he said that the, the story for him, he does not talk about the story of the Good Samaritan. He talks about the story of the young man who walked alone. The young man who walked alone. Never walk alone because whatever it is you're going through, along the way there will be uh, whoops, there will be thugs, there will be things, things that will want to steal, kill, and destroy what you've got. So if you ever find yourself in a situation, reach out to someone, talk to somebody, and we are available to be able to walk with you. And God will bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend. Of course. The guy who's behind. Wait, say your title because I might be adding and subtracting some things before we leave. Just call me John Mark, I'm fine. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> I love that he, he don't place his. Um, no way. He no don't way. Place his, he I'm don't place his, his title. Uh, lakini, uh, oh, yeah, it only pass it was. But okay, if you want the full title, you know where I come from, use the right title. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm Reverend John Mark, and my, my designation is um, yes. my, my, my official position. I'm the provincial director, which is the national director of the Anglican Church, the next director of missions for the Anglican Church of Kenya. Yes. So. So I'm responsible for the whole mission work that the Anglican Church does. <laughs> so that, that's in part fact, of it. It's a small job. In, you know, even Omena is a, is a fish where tilapias are. So I'm, I'm the Omena in the big fish. But <laughs> yeah, I'm a down place like Lejake. Anyway. You know what, John Mark? Uh, yeah. From today, we want to we, youthful expressions. We want to start working together with you so that we can bring in more youth and have more conversations. You know, in your capacity, I know you can be able to sound this more better than we could, better than I could. Uh, and so that is why I am so happy to invited you over to come and to just speak. So yes, um, I, I, I would like us, I would like youthful expressions to work together. So much with, with you guys. Eh? Yeah, that available. Available. What, what in, uh, in, work and connect very well. I'm actually coming up with something. We are going to work with uh, Kupamba and we are going to, we've created a new ministry called Zabibu, targeting young professionals, young adults, anybody above 24, because we realize they are floating in there. They don't have a place. Uh, they are not in um, the couples fellowship. Some are newly married, so they're joining groups. Some are struggling with parenting, some are in and out of love. I don't know how that works, but it does. <laughs> in and out of um, some are yeah. trying to find out what exactly they want to do. Their dad um, got them to be doctors, and then they discovered they wanted to be bouncers. So they are bouncing doctors. So at the end of the day, <laughs> we just want to a forum where they can come home and, and walk together. We want Jesus to be relevant in their lives. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yes, uh, definitely, definitely. And uh, of course, Tabitha Pia Messia will reach out to you. Um, uh, uh, Madam President, I know. We will uh, work I with want... also. We always do. Yeah. Tabitha Pia and Chizanga Yatini, but Nampenanga Sana. Anyway, before I give Michelle I back. Confirm, uh, I confirm. I <laughs> confirm. Uh, before, before I give Michelle back this, this uh, microphone. Madam President, Amanda, happy, happy, Madam President. Oh, she's there. She's, she's clearing her throat to sing a chorus. Oh, <laughs> Mtali, I, I, you know, we, we can't, we can't have the session and not have you say something. It would be remiss of me not to have you say something. So, uh, before I give Michelle back the microphone, uh, let me just thank Grace Archie for coming and for being here. Let me thank. Uh, 
uh, Vipsel, who's been here from the beginning, at a Jazima, at a video, you know? So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being an advit, Nedangwa advit fan of youthful expression, uh, youthful expressions from its, from its onset. Uh, so, uh, Madam President, say something before we give this microphone back to Michelle so that uh, at Fungi even have with our final words. Hey, madam. Yawa. Umelala. Masabini it. Amelala. Anakula. Okay, I'm at ring here. Miss Awa, I did Michelle, of course. violence. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, yeah, Melini. So, Michelle, of course, I'm so happy that uh, you know we 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 began youthful expressions, and I hope that it continues to grow. But yes, enough has been said. Final thoughts, Michelle, as you end the show. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much, Rodrigo, for that. Um, we have comments here. Catherine says, "Hurting people hurt others. You're not Jesus, Junior." You have no power to change anyone. So Usijembe to change a man or a woman, yeah? And Vipkel says, I uh, know, we have Fazla David. She says, never walk alone in this journey. Anyway, far from that, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you, Madam Tabitha. It was an honor to have you here. Thank you, Reverend Jan Mark. I was so happy to see you here. You have said it all. You have helped us a lot, I'm sure. And to Zipporah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for, for everything you have said. I know this has impacted many people. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank everyone, the AOV Season 3 group, and to thank the AOV Season 2 group also for joining in and for helping us address this issue. Also, I want to thank my producer, my boss, my friend, <laughs> Rodrigo. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity. Without you, I don't know to answer the topic, Ajay, but thank you so much for being there. So until next time, guys, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Michelle. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> eh, na Michelle, utafuta John Mark na utafuta Tabitha. Tutawashika. I yes. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. to another good night. God bless. God bless you.